Welcome to Johannesburg, South Africa. This is South Africa's largest city and the second largest city in Africa. Today, we're going to learn about an important chapter in South African history called Apartheid with a visit to Nelson Mandela's house in Soweto. Let's go check it out. This is the stadium in Johannesburg where they have the World Cup finals. This right here is a mine dump. They have these all over town. Now we head to a sprawling township called Soweto, created in the 1930s by the white government to separate the blacks. Was to move away the non-white groups from the cities elsewhere, where it could be, it was going to be distance away um, from the city areas. But also those people were still needed to come into the city areas for labor work. Soweto became the largest black city in South Africa, but until 1976, its population could only have the status as temporary residents, serving the workforce of Johannesburg. This area is famous for once being the home of Bishop Desmond Tutu, Nelson Mandela, and comedian Trevor Noah. This area is also famous for the violent uprising of 1976, which brought international attention to end apartheid. Okay, so we are in Soweto. This is a township in Johannesburg, um, short for Southwest Township. This right here is Desmond Tutu's house. We can only see the cement wall, but we're here in Soweto. Power station built in 1960s. This was generating electricity for the city of Johannesburg, not for Soweto. Anyone would like to go to Mandela House? Yes. Okay. So this is the house on the right hand side here. This right here is Mandela's house. We're gonna take a tour. It's 15 minutes long. This is his wife, Winnie. Got our tickets. Nelson Mandela originally lived in this house for 15 years, but when he came back from prison, he only stayed for 11 days because he had no privacy due to the meat. And during the apartheid years or the apartheid times, police shot a lot from this direction to terrorize or threaten Mamawi. Nelson Mandela was the first one to attend school in his family. At the age of seven years, Nelson Mandela attended a primary school near the village of Kuhn. Do it again. So, oh, I love oh, that. I can't do that. I love it. She's good. <laughs> <laughs> but, so it's where he was given the name Nelson by his teachers because they couldn't pronounce his African name. And he believes he was named after a great British admiral named Lord Nelson. His African name is Holy Sasha. Holy Oh, I love oh, that. I can't do that. I love that. It's... <laughs> so, Polikatla means pulling a branch of a tree or simply translated to troublemaker. And he lived up to his name. Nelson Mandela moved to Johannesburg avoiding an arranged marriage. And here in Johannesburg, he rented a shack in a township called Alexander. Worked as a security guard at the mines and he later worked as an article clerk at a law firm. To where he met his mentor Walter Sisulu. 1961, Nelson Mandela formed the Ukonto Wesisu, meaning the Spear of the Nation. It's a military wing to the ANC and he was appointed the Commander in Chief. 1962, Nelson Mandela travels to different African countries for his military training and on his way back, he was arrested in a town called Hoi in Peter Maritzburg and he was sentenced for five years for leaving South Africa using a fake passport. 
and for organizing strikes. And while he was in prison, apartheid police raided their headquarters in Ravonia in a farm called Lily's Leaf. And there they found documents with Nelson Mandela's handwriting. Nelson Mandela together with nine others were put on trial in what became known as the Ravonia trial. And they were sentenced to life imprisonment for treason to where Nelson Mandela was sentenced to 27 years in prison. But he stayed in three different prisons. The first prison was Robben Island of which he stayed the longest day from 1964 to 1982, which was 18 years. Second prison was Paul Small Prison and the last prison was Victor Perster Prison. And while he was in Victor Perster Prison, it's when he began negotiations with P. W. Porter and F. W. Dicker, the last two apartheid presidents. And Mr. Dicker decided to release him on the 11th of February 1990. Nelson Mandela originally lived in this house for 15 years, but when he came back from prison, he only stayed for 11 days because he had no privacy due to the meal. So when he moved to the other side of Soweto, just over a rocky hill that side known as the Beverly Hills of Soweto. And then Nelson Mandela married three wives, but separately. The first wife was Evelyn, and with Evelyn they were married for 12 years. The second wife is Winnie Matikizela Mandela, and with Winnie they have two daughters together. Their names are Zenani and Zinziso and they are both ambassadors. One is in Denmark, the other one is in Argentina, representing South Africa. And then the third wife is Grasha Machel. And Grasha Machel is a very special lady. She's even well known in the Guinness Book of World Records for marrying two presidents. <laughs> so the first wow. husband was Samora Machel, <laughs> who was the president of Mozambique. And the second husband was Nelson Kholisata Mandela, who was the first president of a democratic South Africa. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me with our manuscripts from the book Long Walk to Freedom. Nelson Mandela wrote the book in 1975 while he was in prison. And sometimes fire would be returned. So the wall served as a ship. So this is Mandela's house. He moved here in 1947. There was no running water or electricity here. So this is Mandela's bedroom and the bed is a replica because he was over six foot four. So they have a beer called Soweto. That's kind of funny. This was one of the schools involved in the Soweto uprising. Interesting. This is the memorial for the, the Soweto the uprising. Here. This is where Hector got shot, the schoolboy. He's only 13. This is the memorial for the Soweto uprising, and this is the photo that was released and started the sanctions from international countries. Basically, they were trying to teach the students Afrikaans, the language of the oppressor. They rebelled and showed some civil disobedience and were shot. At Rantingen, yes. <clears throat> that was actually the, the trash uh, uh, camp. They were all metal. So as students were running around into these homes because of shootings, they'll pick up these trash can uh, uh, leads, use that as a shield. <laughs> To this day, Soweto has a population of 1.3 million people, 99% of which are African Black and 1% colored. Apartheid lasted from 1948 to 1994, and South Africa became a democratic, free elected country with the election of Nelson Mandela in 1994. The time for the healing of the wounds has come. The moment to bridge the chasms that divide us has come. The time to build is upon us. 
Nelson Mandela was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993 for his work in civil rights and bringing a peaceful termination to the apartheid regime. Our visit to South Africa comes 24 years after apartheid, and Nelson Mandela would have been 100 years old today. As we experienced during our trip, the wounds of apartheid are still healing, and the unemployment rate here is around 26%. There's two million people living in Shacks in Cape Town. Look at this. Wow. It goes right from here to the to Falls Bay, to the beach you actually uh, run to yesterday. Strand. Strand Beach. And uh, to the Vita's Plate area as well. Now, you can see uh, that's all government, all houses, all new uh, apartments. We barely scratch the surface of South Africa's fascinating history. If you'd like to learn more about apartheid, definitely check out the two books listed in the description below, Trevor Noah's Born a Crime and A Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela. And with that, we'll leave you with a speech from Mr. Mandela himself. Like slavery and apartheid, poverty is not natural. It is man-made, and it can be overcome and eradicated by the actions of human beings.